What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing. Today, we're gonna to be mounting the PSU to the side of the GTEC Persa i3 aluminum, and we're gonna add a nice little enclosure to hide all the wires. All right, so I went ahead and on Thingiverse, found this pretty ingenious mounting system here. So these mounts here actually squeeze the power supply, and there is on the far side here, you can't see it, I'll try to pull around to it in a minute, uh, there's an M3 screw that screws in and sandwiches this. So you get two of them printed, and that's what holds it on. I mean, it is completely stable. I might move my whole printer trying to move it. And then there's this. So this is a ventilated cover, and here in the front is where the switch is gonna go. Here on the side is where the, actually, power plug will mount to. And there's a mounting screw here, and in the description, they said to add a little zip tie down here at the end. So it's actually gonna mount on just like this. And that'll be great because this wire here is a big pain. It, you know, it's clumsy. It, I've unplugged it a few times. I've actually hit the switch a few times. So we don't want that to happen anymore. But in order to make this happen, we're gonna need to shorten down these wires. So I went ahead and I still have a little bit of a stock. So I have some spade connectors and I have a couple Y connectors, and these are gonna replace, I'm gonna to need to cut down, they're gonna replace these ones. I'm gonna to to cut down this cable here, probably about to here, because it just needs to be just about like here, leave a little bit of extra wire, but we don't need too much. You know, we'll probably end up just stripping off this insulation here, because it's all gonna be contained, it's not gonna be any harm. And then this here, probably cut down in half, because it's gonna to need to go down to about here, Let's see if I can do this a little better. So it's going to be go down like that. Mm, like that. Sorry for the wiggle. So, first, let's go ahead. I've already disconnected power. That's obviously first step one. Next, we're going to need to disconnect the, the terminals from the power supply. So we need to get a screwdriver. And get under here. And we'll go brown, blue, yellow. And there they are. Okay, so now that we have that off, we're gonna cut this down. Again, it doesn't need to be too terribly long. So I guess we'll cut down to about here, strip off, leave some of the insulation on there, I guess. And we'll go from there. So let's get our cutters, which I dropped. Okay, get our cutters. Snip away, and we're gonna strip out off this outer insulation. So you can kind of just hit it a couple times, and once you bend it, it just peels right off. And you just gotta pull it off. Which one little piece you're sticking? There we go. All right, so there's those. Now, we just need to strip off a bit of the wire on these. All right, so now you just wanna twist your ends. You don't want any stray strands going anywhere. So now these are gonna go back onto here. So we need to put some Y insulated connectors on them. So you just put this down in there till the wire comes to the top. Get our crimps. Back on there. And crimp it down. And there it is on there, nice and sturdy. And let's do the other two. That one came off, so let's try another one. It happens sometimes the crimp doesn't go down quite tight enough as it should. Just gonna double check these ones. Put them down there one more time. 
these crimps are everything. So, got to make sure they're on there tight. So you can see, my stock is not all the same size. So we're going to use a pair of needle nose. And for this wide one, we're going to just kind of bend it in just a smidge on all of these. So they fit on the terminals. This one will probably be fine, but these other two are a little too wide. So, all right, now that we have that done, we got to do this side now. So I already wrote down the colors on how this hooks up because I'm going to forget. So we'll pull these off. Three. Ooh. All right, set that aside. And we're just gonna actually make sure that my new insulated ones fit on here nicely, which they do. Sometimes you have ones that are too big or too small, they won't go on to the tabs. You wanna be careful of that. So this one as well, we can keep this one a little bit longer, but it's just way too long. I'm pretty sure it is. So, so this goes in here. So, I don't want to push it in just yet because I don't want to seat it yet. I need to file that anyway, so that's a little too tight. And so that's going to go up to there, and this is going to go. Actually, no, I think we can keep it. I really do think we can. But still, we need to file this down a little bit. So, I have a nice little set of diamond files, and so we'll file this down. Bam, on, off. Doesn't get any better than that. So like I said, so this one is gonna go back up into it. This one just kinda, kinda get turned around. So actually we're gonna pass this one. We're gonna go underneath the switch. Try to make life a little easier here. Pull it out here. Push those down so that way it just goes in kind of like that these will connect up to it so now we're going to take off the actual power connector on this and we're going to thread it up through the hole in the bottom so let's do that real quick Now we got that through. We are nearly home. So let's get our plug. We're going to hook this back up. So for this, it's blue on top, yellow in the middle. Nope. Other way around. So blue here. Yellow is still in the middle, and brown down here. So I hold like that, look at my drawing. Blue, yellow, brown, blue, yellow, brown, money. So we're gonna kinda have to push this in here, like so. Oh, and that fits in there just nice. So to screw this, we're going to go ahead and find some M4s and see how those fit. So thankfully, in my Forgetech kit, came with a lot of spares. So I've got some little M4, these are probably only a few millimeter, maybe what, eight millimeter? And those fit in there just nice. There we go. So that's mounted on there real nice. 
We've got our connections now that need to go to the power supply. Let's add those in and see how it looks. Okay, everything's where it should be. Now, slip this up on there. It's just about lined up, right there. So I'm gonna get an M3, and we'll put it right here on the side, and then we'll put a little zip tie right here in the corner to hold that back side up. Got our wee little M3, and we're gonna need another bit for this. Because I need to put pressure on it, we're actually gonna go ahead and switch the way I'm holding it. That way I don't have to worry about it sliding away from me here. There we go. Slide this up. A little bit higher. Come on. Yeah, it's just off from getting to there. And it's not because it's not going high enough, it's because it doesn't go back far enough. So we're going to go ahead and get our little round file. We'll file that hole just a smidge. Hallelujah, there we go. Alright, so now let's get a zip tie. Tighten that down. All right, so we got that through now. And now we're kind of... Ooh, sit that whole thing down. That works out pretty well. Just like that. There we go. That's nice and secure now. All we have to do now is run this over to the back side. So, and we're actually just going to go right underneath the threaded rods that hold the X on there, or the Y, I guess, whatever. Run it up here, plug it in. And there we have it. There it is. So there is the G Tech. Persa i3 aluminum PSU mount. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, leave a comment down below if you think I did a good job, if you think I should do something differently, or whatever you want to see me do this printer next. So, have a good one.